it's pretty special for me to be sitting on the back of this sled and just taking it all in and you know trying to contribute where I can when they give me the opportunity to run wit beside them but you can't do that for very long because you cannot keep up. They're amazing athletes. These dogs, some of them have run the Iditarod and the Yukon Quest thousand mile races. These dogs can run a hundred miles a day with the, you know, before rest and it's just amazing to be part of this. We have a bit of a problem now. We just had this guy and this guy back here got into a fight. It happened so fast. Spikes opened up a bit and we're gonna have to do some surgery. Yeah, quick bite and that's all it took. So we're gonna end up having to drop this guy, but we're probably gonna have to take them all the way back to back to the trucks. And this part of the journey is over for this guy anyways. So we're gonna have to regroup and figure it all out. Come on, bud. I know that you do not like this. It's for your own good, trust me. Oh, buddy. The main priority is taking care of this guy and making sure he doesn't get infected and clean his wound and, and get him back home and where he can rest up. I've got two bots. Spike obviously didn't make it back today. He's in town being taken care of. I'm sure he's not happy that he isn't here. <laughs> but, so we're just seven today. Well, we're eight. There's eight of us. Where yesterday there was nine. We're gonna make it. We'll just keep on pushing. Get on through. Get ourselves a bison. What? Go! There's all kinds of sign here. Do you see that fresh stuff back there? We're seeing lots of signs, so we're gonna stop here. I just hope that the dogs don't make so much noise. We're in the right zone now, so it's time to put the binos on. We came through a, a group of tracks back there that they're just all through here. The canyon is not far from where we are now, and I don't wanna take the dogs any closer to it because the other side of that canyon is is great bison country. Unfortunately, we're in it with the 16 dogs. Like, they're an amazing tool, but, and these guys are calm, like, relatively speaking to, you know, for sled dogs. So, I mean, like Magnus has done, you know, an amazing job. Snow is too thick, too deep. These dogs are a great tool, but they have their limitations as well. And their excitability is one of their, one of their negative points. You know, after getting up on the side of the hill and spending two and a half, almost three hours glassing this one bison, it, uh, it certainly has chewed up a big part of our day only to find when uh, it stood up, it was a cow. I just could not tell, you know, I could not see the horns. I couldn't tell what it was. You can't walk away from it just because you can't tell what it is. So we, we definitely burned burned the day on this, but that's how it goes. So we're gonna drop down into the valley and head back to camp and regroup, meet up with Magnus, have some supper and uh, figure out a game plan for tomorrow.
you know, looking up at this good mature bull he's kind of prime it's really tough to make the decision to walk past but i'm i'm just looking for something i think a little bit older and we'll see how it all goes nonetheless it's amazing to watch these guys on the side of the hill and just just experience it the lone bison out there Don't, why don't what we do is we go right to the top of the mountain. We hike along the top and we come down on him. And then we can see where he is and get in a great position. This is his home. He lives right here. He's just down over this ridge. Walking in his, his tracks up on top of the ridge. Like this is just where he's living. He just walks back and forth. Just like right down here. That's incredible. That's 25 yards. What a huge animal. Unbelievable. That's the way we were trying to get in originally with the dogs. As you can see, that river back there is, well, that blue or green is complete overflow. We have some overflow to deal with, but that's miles of overflow. Would have been a problem, not to mention everything else, just getting to, to that point. This journey is not over by any means. It's almost just begun. The hard part is going to be getting home. We're going home with an amazing animal and a lot of great memories. Better back there. Six hours ago, this was not here. What is that, eight inches? I walked straight through here and there was no water. Well. This is not my forte, running a camera, but we're a little bit in de desperation mode at the moment. We need to get out off this river as soon as possible. The guys are just coming behind me. We're all humping bison, which <laughs> not in anybody's world is typically a good idea. We gotta pull an all-nighter or we're not gonna get out of here. Because there's, there's that overflow tomorrow will be twice as much. And if we can't get the dogs in until after daylight, then we haven't even got them through the canyon yet. 
There's no way we're gonna do it at night. So. Are you having fun yet? My head torch just died. That's not very good. <laughs> Magnus has said that we may have to unhook the dogs and carry some of the, the bison through the heavy overflow because even the dogs can't pull it and to get them through safely, that's maybe what we'll have to do, but we'll see. We've had our ups and we've had our downs for sure, but it's all part of the journey and you know, we've got a lot of miles ahead of us still to get out, but it's just been a phenomenal experience for me and one that I'll never forget. This hunt has been all about the experience and with these dogs. It's something I've never done before, but wow, it'll definitely not be my last time. <laughs>